Utopia. A word to describe a world created by a man desiring and craving the ultimate world. This man happened to bear the name Thomas More. Now he created what he deemed the perfect society. But throughout the ages, many have debated this concept and whether or not it could truly exist in the world. Most would say it's impossible. There are too many variables, but... What if we didn't focus on an entire system of betterment and perfection? What if we focus on one aspect of our system now that we know we could tweak perfection? One aspect. Monumental change. Betterment to our society. What if that was what Thomas More was really trying to convey? Continually working to better our society one step at a time. I'm Danny Stack, and I'm about to take you on a journey to a better world. One within our grasp. Join me. There are so many aspects of our world that need to change. How can we decide on which ones to focus on? Well, let's think about this. Let us focus on the worst part of our society, criminals. If we can fix society so criminals aren't consistently terrorizing our streets and our dreams, then our world would indeed be a better place. Now understand this. Nearly 650,000 people are released from federal and state prison every year. In a study of 15 states, two-thirds of state prisoners released from incarceration were rearrested. Two-thirds. But here's the kicker. More than half returned to prison within three years of their release. More than half. That's over 50% of, for those of you who aren't so good at math. That's absurd. In other words, people, we are basically recycling criminals through the system and the outside world without rehabilitating them to think, act, and thrive within the constructs of society. If we don't show criminals the right way to act and how to succeed in an acceptable manner, then how can we just expect them to know how to do it all on their own? So here's the proposal. Why not implement a system to create communities within prisons to work through the prisoners' issues, to train them for better quality jobs, and to show them how to interact with others in a healthy, constructive way? Also that when these prisoners re-enter the world at large, they have a better chance of succeeding. Brilliant, right? I know, I know. It's not the first time someone's actually thought of this. There's actually an initiative for all the states to put programs such as these into place in order to facilitate the prisoners' re-entry into society. Each state has some program in the form of another to accomplish the objective, doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But here's the deal. They're all missing different parts of the puzzle that are essential to a successful re-entry. These programs only involve a therapy approach, or a community approach, or an educational approach. Most programs don't start until a prisoner's last year of incarceration before re-entry. Listen to this. A study says that 32% of those treated within a therapeutic community were reconvicted, as compared to 63% for those not treated in the comparison group. For those treated who were reconvicted, the mean number of days before their offense was double that of the control group. There are several methods to these therapeutic communities. One method of treatment is where living in the community is used to model real life situations in order to teach offenders how to deal with them. Dropouts from these therapeutic programs have a 40% likelihood of committing another offense. If, however, offenders complete treatment, likelihood drops to 5%. Obviously, this shows improvement, but there's still that 5%. I don't want to be in that 5%. Now those are just therapeutic community treatment and programs. Then you have the education programs designed to educate offenders to obtain higher quality jobs than just simply burger flipping in McDonald's. For these programs, a Correctional Educational Association study stated that attending school behind bars reduces the likelihood of reincarceration by 23%. Prisoners who went through educational programs had higher wages when released and had a higher employment rate, making bank. Wow, I can get so many 
Almost all of these programs don't start until the prisoner's last year of incarceration before re-entry. These statistics are all great and everything, but we've still got thousands of offenders cycling through the system without improvement. If we don't do something, someone is going to die. Here's what we want. Instead of waiting until the last years of incarceration to start treatment, we develop a program for each offender at the start of their imprisonment and work right up until the end of their release. The more time spent acting in a socially acceptable manner, the more time spent actually behaving in a socially acceptable manner. Instead of only having a therapeutic community program or an educational program, we will have a therapeutic communal education program. A rehabilitation program will blend the ideas of therapy and education to create a complete program for offenders. Prisoners will be assigned to therapeutic communities, which will be in separate sections of the prison, cordoned off from the rest of the prison population. These communities will be led by a trained counselor that will teach them how to properly react in various life situations. These communities will include group and individual therapies, role playing, and an educational component. Within each community, there will be educational and job skills training in order to help offenders secure better jobs and higher wages upon release, which lowers the risk of relapse into criminal activity. And best of all, the programs will be the same. Each prison, the same program. It's a completely brilliant plan. Let's see what John Locke, a brilliant man who inspired Thomas Jefferson in his writing of the Declaration of Independence, has to say about this. Yeah, football. Very strong, man. Yeah. Oh, hey, guys. My name is John Locke. Looking into the mindset of a prisoner, it's no wonder that we have such trouble with these individuals. These offenders are in the state of nature, in which one is entitled to the right to private property and a peaceful lifestyle. If anyone should infringe upon these rights, the penalty shall be death, as any man in his natural state will merely focus on his needs and rights, without concerns for any other individual. But when a commonwealth is established, as it is established within the therapeutic communities, the rights of all people are considered and the rules are created in order to not be infringed upon everyone's right to life. In this instance, you are taking these offenders out of the state of nature and bringing them back into society. But when you take my reasoning into account, your proposition completely aligns. I concur. It looks like Locke agrees. Thank you, my good fellow. Now what about you, Adam Smith? What do you think? You know, man is a constant need for other men, though they may not acknowledge it. And the desire to better our conditioning is need. Your program addresses these workings of our hearts perfectly. Offenders within these programs will be surrounded by people working toward common goals of bettering their chances of survival and success within the real world upon re-entry. Also, this constitutes to a you help me, I help you situation in which we help the offenders thrive as society, and society can in turn benefit from these people as contributing law-abiding citizens. I also think. Thank you, Mr. Smith. It's heartening to know that you agree. You see, folks, some of the great Enlightenment philosophers agree with this program. It could truly benefit our offenders. As these offenders learn how to interact with others and succeed in society, they will be able to contribute to the thriving economy and people within society will need to worry less about the people infringing upon their rights. The world will be a safer place and will be a little bit closer to that heavenly ideal of utopia.